the PyoCreate Halot X1 3D Resin Printer. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys. Now, unless you've been secretly stalking obscure industrial printer manufacturers on LinkedIn, you probably haven't heard of PyoCreate. But you've definitely heard of Creality, the FDM printer giant. Well, PyoCreate is basically Creality's cousin who went off to be a dentist, got really good at it, and now wants to make cool stuff for the rest of us. They've spent the last few years churning out high precision industrial grade printers for dentistry and a few other sectors. But with the Halot X1, they're stepping into our world. And honestly, they've brought along some serious toys. The first thing I noticed about this machine was its compact size. This is a mid-range printer with a build area that's a tiny bit smaller than other typical printers in this range. But unless you're trying to print life-size Groot statues, you should be fine. It has a flip-top lid to grant ample and easy access, though the lid does seem a little flimsy. The menu screen is located at the top of the printer, along with the USB port, and I think this is very sensible positioning. Now, opening the lid shocked me, as I'm used to seeing a lead screw and a linear rail. But with the X1, I was seeing double, with one of each located in both far corners, no doubt to provide increased stability. To the tried and true, the resin tray looks a little different, and here you can see me testing it. It needs to be noted that the X1 unit I have here is a prototype, so some colours may change a little, and I believe that may be the case with this tray. It's got a lever release system that's genuinely clever. But unless you release both levers at once, it does tip slightly, which makes you feel like you're one clumsy move away from a disaster. But it's probably not enough to actually spill resin. And here I'm just fitting and replacing the tray as awkwardly as I can, because that's how I test things. But keep an eye on the small rubber plugs. The tray, incidentally, is fitted with an NACF liner, which were apparently developed for high temperature resistance and non-stick performance. Oh dear. The tray, of course, hovers over a 16K monochrome screen with appropriate 14 by 19 microns of XY resolution, which should lend itself to some super quality printing. The X1 incorporates advanced intelligent zoning technology to partition the display into 92 discrete zones. Okay, it's confession time. I honestly thought the build plate was broken. It looked like the underside of an old air conditioner rather than the sexy laser etched surfaces that we're used to seeing. But I was missing the point. It's actually a very clever idea. Removing a print from a plate can often be very, very difficult. I've actually damaged a few plates in the past because prints have stuck too well. Well, with this plate design, twisting these handles causes sections of the plate to move in and out, effectively freeing trapped prints without needing a hammer, a chisel or a priest. And that's a very clever idea. And yes, before you ask, prints do stick to it. And yes, even though I'm clumsily working backwards here, it works absolutely great. What really freaks me out is fixing in the plate. Because you don't. You just slide it in. No screws, no clamps and no drama. It feels completely wrong. And yet it seems to work just right. It's all part of what Pio Create call a true leveling free system. And leveling is something that many people have a lot of problems with. But when it comes to the X1, all you have to do is slide in the plate. That's it. Job's done. The user interface may appear at first glance to be quite basic, but actually it's wonderfully simple to use. In the past, I grumbled at Creality's printers for failing to have a way of manually moving the build plate but PyoCreate have got that sorted. I have to say though, I do miss the little dancing man 
which has been replaced with a much more sensible glowing logo, though he does still make the odd non-animated appearance. The Halot X1 comes with Wi-Fi, allowing the printer to receive updates as necessary and also giving you the choice of transferring files via the USB stick or via your local network, depending on your choice of slicer. Talking of slicers, the X1 comes with three months free subscription to Cheetu Box Pro. Alternatively, you can download PyoCreate's own slicer from their website. Currently, I don't think this is covered by Leechy, but I'm not aware of any slicer restrictions, so they and other slicer companies will no doubt catch up very quickly. When it comes to heating the resin, something that's absolutely critical in cooler environments, the X1 doesn't have a dedicated heater as such, which did disappoint me. However, it does apparently make careful use of the chamber heating to warm the resin, a trick we've seen before on printers like the Uniformation GK2. And I guess this must have worked as it was a cool 17 degrees Celsius in my workshop and I had no problems printing as you'll see. However, there is a separate unit called the AFU which unfortunately I haven't had access to. Now on the face of things, it appears to be a simple resin pump and I've never been quiet about considering those things to be pointless and worthless. But for the first time ever, I really wish I'd had the opportunity to test one. The X1 AFU, for example, heats resin up to 45 degrees Celsius within just three minutes and also allows for manual temperature control, which sounds amazing. As for the AFU being a simple resin pump, well, apparently it uses lasers to monitor resin levels in real time and automatically feeds in resin when low and stops feeding when it's just right. It also automatically returns the resin to the bottle once the print is complete. The AFU also cleverly weighs the content of the bottle and from this is able to determine if there's enough resin to complete the job, which is very clever thinking. And lastly, and something many users will love, if you use Halot Official Resin, each bottle has an RFID tag on the bottom. Placing the bottle into the AFU automatically feeds the ideal resin profile settings to the printer, removing all the nasty guesswork. Though, for the control freaks amongst us, manual setting adjustment is still possible. I haven't had the opportunity to test this AFU, but it does sound impressive. So I hate to admit it, but I kind of want one. Not having an AFU, I had to pour in the resin manually, and PyoCreate were kind enough to send me their Halot 16K resin. It was whilst printing the Emanolab Town test print that I got the biggest shock this printer has to offer. Well, it certainly surprised me. This top-down system means that the build plate remains stationary, which apparently significantly improves printing stability and accuracy. The twin linear rails and lead screws enhance this stability even further. It's this combination of the movable tray and freaky loose fitting build plate that are the basis of the X1's acclaimed true leveling free system. As I watched waiting for it all to fail horribly, I noticed how the semi-floating plate sat itself on top of the build tray, maintaining, I would assume, a perfect uniform spacing. It's simple but brilliant, and hand on heart, it needed no adjustment and worked perfectly straight out of the box. It doesn't get any easier than that. When it comes to the actual prints, well, these look top notch to me. As usual, at this extreme level of magnification, your eyes are drawn more to the dust than to the prints. So that should tell you just how incredibly fine the detail is you're seeing here. This is the sort of amazing detail I would expect from a 16K screen. And I'll be honest, because of that floating build plate idea, I really didn't expect this, but it proves how easy it is to misjudge. These truly are stunning prints, and every bit as good as you could possibly hope for. So what do I think of the PyoCreate Halot X1? 
Well, some bits fell off, the lid's a little wobbly, and some parts look kind of cheap, tacky and unfinished. But it's critical to remember that this is a genuine prototype, and much of this will change in final production. It seems to me that BioCreate has set out here to say, we have the easiest to use 16K mid-range printer on the market. And from what I can see, they've completely succeeded in that goal. I recently praised the Hay Gears Reflex RS for its ability to make printing novice friendly. But it does that with certain restrictions, like brand only resin, brand only slicer, and a price tag that is beyond the pocket of many consumers. Well, the Halot X1 is every bit as easy to use, if not easier. Plate leveling just isn't an issue at all. Print removal is the best system I've seen, and it's way better than a metal scraper any day. And if you get the AFU, then heating and even tray filling are things you won't need to worry about. And amazingly, if you use Halot resin, it will automatically decide on the ideal printing profile for you. But unlike Hay Gears, BioCreate are allowing you to choose which slicer you prefer and they're not stopping you from tinkering with the profile settings, or even using a resin made by another brand. So what we have here is a printer that produces excellent prints, which is what we all really want, but is also easy enough that a complete newbie can be up and running in minutes without any prior resin printing knowledge, while still being flexible enough to allow experienced users to tinker without restrictions. And that's quite brilliant. Because the consumer end of the market is new to BioCreate, they've opted to go down the Kickstarter route, for which there's a direct link in the description. And they've apparently already reached their goals, which frankly doesn't surprise me. It's not for me to spend anybody's money, but the pricing I'm seeing here looks pretty reasonable. And if you're looking for true simplicity, based on what I've seen, I think getting the AFU would be a smart move. But above all, if nothing else, what we have here is a very exciting, innovative and easy to use resin printer from a company I really, really hope we'll hear more from in the future, as I for one am very impressed. And that's it for this video guys. I hope you found it useful. So take care and thanks for watching.